All right, so week seven, doing some dynamic programming. This was actually a really, really fun program, so I highly recommend trying it on your own before you just look through the code on GitHub. But it's there in case you need to. Um, basically, what we're doing is a game of hopscotch, and we're trying to start at a specific number and go to zero. Um, there's four different moves you can do depending on what number of the square you're currently on. So on any square, you can move forward exactly one, which means you're going from you know, i to i minus one. This adds one to your score. You're trying to do it within the lowest score possible. So each of these moves, you'll be able to move forward closer to zero, square zero, um, but it adds on a specific number to your score. So you're trying to get the lowest score within these. So you're gonna have to backtrack a little bit and check. So there might be multiple ways for you to get down to zero. Um, obviously you can continue to just do minus one until you get to zero, but that'll probably add on a lot more to your score as these are the better moves. And the second one is if it's a square, is a prime greater than 10, you move exactly the number of squares equal to the units digit. So 37 is a prime greater than 10. Um, the units digit is seven, so you can move seven forward, and that'll add three to your score, always. These numbers don't change, it's just based on what these move down. Same if it's a multiple of 11, say 44, then you can add those numbers together and that'll be eight, and you can move down eight squares. Using the multiple of 11, we'll always add four to the score, and if it's a multiple of seven, you can always move forward exactly four squares, um, and that'll add two to your score. So here is basically like a little bit of a test case. Here's a game where we have five different games in the input file. This is the number that you start on, and you're trying to go to zero and the output would be how many points it takes to get down there. So obviously if you start on square one, you just use the first move. It's the only move available to you, um, and that adds one to your score, so that's the end of that game. 16, um, you'll want to start off, here's an explanation of this one right here actually, start off going from 16 to 15, which will add one to your score, 15 to 14, which will add one to your score. Then you can use the multiple of seven rule, which will take you down four squares, and add two to your score, I believe. Yes. So now your score is at four. Then we go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then one to zero is twelve. So you'll have twelve points for that second game. Uh, seven, very simple. You use the multiple seven rule for first. Go from seven to three, and that'll add two points. Then three to two, two to one, one to zero, that's three more points, so that'll be points of five. Um, here's explained of game order 39. And that's basically it for that. Let's go ahead and go through the code. Um, I've included a couple input files. This is the basic one we're gonna be going through in the code. You can say this is this exact same as the PDF. If you run it, we get the same number of points. Um, I also include one that uses 200 different games. Um, if you don't use memoization in this, this actually takes a very long time to execute. It might not even execute, it might time out. So the whole idea behind this is to use the correct dynamic programming algorithm and use some memoization with that as well. And that's something we learned in lecture that course that week. So here's a little explanation of the dynamic programming approach that I took for each test case. Um, my function is recursive function that defines the minimum score you start with from square k. Then I look up to the four possible choices I have for the move. Um, that's the four different options. Usually they don't all um, apply, but if they do, then we try and take the best one, and we always go through every single, every single solution. So then we memoize it using an array of ints, and you define the base cases. So after each possible move, we check the best score at the end, and we use that one. So here's a little bit of the, the code. That's just the main stuff where we print out the end. Here's our function to check if it's prime, which we use for two of the moves, actually. No, just one. Um, here's the mod 11. Here's a containing function. This is the memoization function, including the four possible moves. 
and we use max value to compare um, just as a standard. We can always just do minus one. Here's this in case if it's prime and greater than 10, so we use that as prime function. Here's the mod 11 function. And then here's the fourth case if it's just a multiple of seven. Um, we take the minimum of all four values. So we want to make sure that we're always taking the least number of score. And that's how we go through it. Feel free to go through that. Um, I highly recommend trying it on your own though. And now we'll go on to week eight. All right, so week eight, backtracking. This is basically navigating a imaginary robot through a maze um, using depth first search. Depth first search, sorry. Um, and basically what we have is we have an input file with the number of mazes we have to go through and the next number is how many rows the um, maze is. And actually it's a, like this one would be a 5 by 5. This one would be a 15 by 15. This one's also a 15 by 15. And we just print out to see if the robot can or cannot get it to the other side. You start here in the leftmost side and you're trying to get to the rightmost side. So like here you would see this is the only exit because the entire right side column is exits except for this one. Um, and this is the start because all the left side is X's except this one. So you can see in this one, this one is solvable because you can move here, here, down one, right, right, up, right, right. Um, this one is solvable because you can go through here, down through here, blah, 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 blah up through here, up through here, and go out. And this one's not because you can actually backtrack from the ending and see that you can't get out. There's there's no possible way for you to to get back to the start or from start to finish, whichever way you want to go. Um, the program starts from the start point and checks all possible ways. Um, very simple program, very fun program to write. It's only about 200 lines. Um, half of that is comments and reading in the file. So the actual algorithm is very simple. Um, basically. I have a couple more input files for you to test. Here's a simple one. Here's the regular one that we'll be testing right now. Um, and then here's a final one, which uses 10 different mazes. Feel free to go through that. It's pretty self-explanatory how to make a maze. Um, basically what I do is I read in the maze as instead of X's and, and underscores, I use ones and zeros and I make it a 2D array. And then I recursively move each direction and check for the three cases being out of bounds, hitting a wall, or if I visited this spot before. And then I just see if my robot can reach the end column um, and the spot is a valid open space, then I return true, meaning I can get to the end. So we just go through that. We create the mazes in 1D and 2D arrays. And we just check, you know, if it's an X, I'm gonna turn it to a one. If it's an open space, I'm gonna turn it to a zero. Um, go through there. And then here is my find path, which just does the recursive checking. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and run it. We see we can get, we can get, and we cannot get to the other side based on this, which is the same as the PDF. So it's very fun. Try it on your own.